I think you got it there. I guess. Still running. You never. 
never know about electronics. Let me get over here and see if we're even still on. I don't know if we are or not. We are? Just well, ask for input from the audience. Huh? Yeah. Just ask for input from yeah, the like, audience. Yes, and, but that would be nice if there was an audience here. <laughs> I guess we're still going. Anyway, here we are at the ranch. This is where we have Open Gate Bible Fellowship. and We're just glad that we can even be here tonight. It's a little bit later than we usually start, but that's, that's my fault. And it's nobody else's fault. It's mine. I want to uh, share some things with you tonight. And uh, I know I've been talking in the past about some things that have been maybe a little difficult for people to completely understand and maybe accept. And uh, I ask you to bear with me on this because tonight I, uh, I have a message that I want to share with you straight from my heart. It's talking about the mercies of God. People right now, they might be saying, uh, in fact, I've had them say, I'm telling you, where is this God at that you talk so much about that said he's the loving God and he's full of mercy and grace? Where exactly is he right now? Well, I'll tell you where he is. He's in heaven right now, and Jesus Christ is seated on the right hand of him, making intercession for you and me that know Christ as Savior. I even read it again last week, and it bears being mentioned again. We have a God in heaven that his eyes are going to and through, through throughout this whole world. He's aware of what's going on. He's never left. He's never gone to sleep. He's not ill. In fact, I read in the Bible, it says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. A lot of people have a misunderstanding that they don't completely understand. It's, sometimes it's difficult to try to explain. But Jesus is God. He's the second person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now, there's some people don't believe that, but it's all through the Bible. Even in Genesis, it says, let us make man in our image. God wasn't speaking to the angels. The counsel of God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And he is full of mercy. Right now he's well aware of what's going on. And he says we can call upon him. Before we read, I want to pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we have. And even under these circumstances when we're dealing with electronics and looking into a an iPad and trying to do our best to, to deliver a message and we haven't got an audience, Lord. There's people out there I know that are listening and we thank you for that. I pray now, Lord, that you would help me through this because there are some things I really want to get to tonight and explain to the very best of my ability. And Lord, I'm, I'm looking to you, precious Holy Spirit. Monitor what I have to say and help me through this message. Touch hearts and lives, change lives even, as they would even listen even into the future or even presently right now to this message. For we ask it in thy precious name, Lord. Amen. For you that would like to follow, in the Old Testament, uh, I'm looking at Lamentations. Jeremiah, the prophet, has written this under the auspices and the guidance and the direction of God himself. The Bible says, Holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. This Bible that we read and we look at right now is the living Word of God. No contradictions. It's right from cover to cover. It's His living Word. Now I realize we're looking at the Old Testament once again, but we still have the same God that we have. We have a new covenant, a more sure word of prophecy, but we have a God that's still the same, and He loves us. He's always been full of mercy and full of grace. And I want to read on the third chapter of Lamentations, and we're going to start with the 21st verse unto about the 26th. Jeremiah says, It is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. 
great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto those who wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31, one of the most familiar passages that's used in Christendom, and I never get tired of it. What a wonderful verse. Isaiah writes, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of, as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It says in God's word, men ought to pray rather than faint. There may be some of you out there that have said, oh, I don't believe in prayer. I'm sorry about that if you feel that way. But I can tell you right now, prayer changes things. And thank God for we that know Christ as Savior, we have the right to enter into that throne room. Even if we've been bad, we have the right to come unto him with his arms wide open saying, I will pardon you. No matter how many times we have asked, if we are serious about it, God will forgive. Now, I want to take a look at that verse up there. It was actually the 22nd. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Let me give you a little background on this portion of Scripture. The Babylonians had overtaken Israel. They had basically destroyed Jerusalem. It was in ruins. And here the Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, he says, only before the mercy of God we would have all been consumed. But because of God's mercy, he extended that mercy and that grace. Everyone was not consumed. You say, well, what does this have to do with today? Some of the remarks that I'm going to make right now, some folks might say, well, that radical old man trying to preach. But let me tell you, whether I be old or I be young, I have been young, and now I'm old, and I've seen change once again that's happened on our globe. I've seen on the United States what has happened. We have gone along for so long, and a lot of folks may not like this, but we're so accustomed to having plenty that I believe that we have put other things before the God that created us. I didn't mean to get into this, but I'm going to. We have aborted our babies we have taken the sanctity of marriage and made it a debauchery with same-sex marriages. We have replaced the idols. Oh, they're not graven. No. But we put so many things before the God that we serve. Many of the preachers have soft-soaked the Word of God because they're afraid if they talk about sin, the folks won't come back. I read a Bible that says, if I, Jesus Christ, be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. We've turned the church into an entertainment center. And a matter of fact, we seem to not have enough time to do a normal schedule of services We've replaced it with, we want family time together tonight. 
We had family time together when I was growing up. We went to church on Sunday night. We started out in the morning. Many times we would go all day into the night. Then we'd go to somebody's house for afterglow. Have maybe watermelon, ice cream. I'd get to bed 11, 12 o'clock, still got an education. We had family time together. But for the grace of God, he has been very, very patient with us. People have replaced the things of God with the things of their own preference. Those things are God's. You say, what about my family? Anybody doesn't take care of their family, they're worse than an infidel. We're supposed to take care of our family. God demands that we do that. And he'll hold us accountable if we don't. I know this is hard tonight, and people say it's an old-fashioned, but I'm going to tell you what, it's the old-fashioned gospel. It's the old-fashioned message of Jesus Christ that has built the church, the fundamental Bible-believing church. And even more important than the building ever thought about being, the real church is the body of believers. The body of, the, of believers are the ones that have accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior. They are members of the household of faith. The Bible tells us to do good to everyone, but especially those of the household of faith. The question is, I would ask you tonight, as I'm shortening this message, are you a member of the family of God? I've heard it said, even all my life and even recently, they're writing songs, every man is your brother. Let me, let me explain what that really means. Every man, every woman, I'm talking about mankind, there are brothers in creation. But every man is not our brother in Christ or our sister in Christ. To be a member of the family of God, we've got to be born again. And there's the question. When we deserve justice, God has given us mercy and grace. He's not consumed us. But right now, he's giving us another opportunity. I want you all to come back to me and you that have never come, I want you to know the door is wide open. He says, those who come to me, he says, I will in no wise cast you out. And it's really a simple message, even though it was a very, very rigorous, painful price to pay on the cross of Calvary. But over 2,000 years ago, our loving Savior Jesus Christ laid his life down on the cross of Calvary, shed his blood for you and me, and on the third day rose again that we might have eternal life. Once again, those who receive him, he will in no wise cast out. And I would ask you tonight, as we draw into this time together, if you've never accepted Christ, in just a few minutes, I want to tell you how you can do that. Maybe you say, you know, I, uh, I made a profession of faith years ago. I've not been walking with the Lord. Thank God that we that have maybe strayed one time or another, we weren't consumed at that time. We weren't taken out. Once again, when we deserve justice, or deserve justice, he gave us mercy. There's still room at the cross. I saw a sign here a number of years ago, and maybe some of you all did too. It's, uh, Our Lord accepts U-turns. And thank God for that. Because all we like sheep have gone astray and turned everyone to their own way. But the Lord has laid upon himself the iniquity of us all. If you've never received Christ as Savior, here is the way to do that. In the prayer that you would say from your heart, Lord Jesus, 
I recognize that I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross to shed your blood for the remission of sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. I now ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me by your precious blood. I believe you died on the cross and rose again. And I now receive you as my Lord and Savior. And in Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. If you prayed that, I'd like to hear from you. You can contact us on the website or wherever this Facebook. And we'd like to hear from you. If you if you need prayer or you want to discuss this further, feel free. Uh, give, give us a contact, some way we can make contact with you. And I want to spend some time with you. We want to tell you what we've done tonight, even though this message might sound hard to you, I want you to know God loves you. He loves you. And his mercy endures forever. And by the way, his mercies are new every day. You know, right now people are saying, how can you talk so much about the mercy in God's favor? After we say our goodbyes tonight, why don't you look around you? My guess is you've probably got plenty of food in the refrigerator. You look in the closet, I'm sure you've got clothes and plenty of them to wear. You go out in the garage and more than likely there's a car out there. It may not be the one that you like, but there's a way to get around. You might take a look at that beautiful family you've got and say, thank God we're all safe. Thank God that we're all breathing and thank God we don't even have this virus. And you know, Lord, if we do, we call upon you because you are the healer. I say, take a look at what we've got. We're so busy taking a look at what we don't have. We're so caught up in it. And people are so fearful. I see people driving in their car, and you do too. They got their mask on and gloves in their own car. Let me tell you, there is safety in the ark of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You can count on him, and his mercies are new every day. Especially we that know him as Savior. You see, when we know him as Lord and Savior, we don't have to walk alone because he says, I'll walk with you, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. Our prayers are with you. Thanks for listening, and have a good night in the Lord.